Call Stories, a reflection for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the called. This catchy saying, commonly heard in the context of lay ministry training, applies well to today's readings. Isaiah's call comes in a heavenly vision that strikes the prophet to be at temple worship. He cannot tear his eyes away, though he knows that doom awaits him for daring to look upon the Lord of hosts. Apparently, the Almighty has other plans, for a six-winged seraphim flies down with a burning ember to cleanse Isaiah's unclean lips, transforming him from unworthy to worthy servant of God. When the Lord asks, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah can now answer boldly, Here I am, send me. This lofty scene marks the prophet's solemn initiation into a new stage of relationship and the conferral of a new and weighty responsibility. Today's psalm refrain takes us right back to the divine throne room. In the sight of the angels I will sing your praises, Lord. And the verse texts from Psalm 138 keep us there, worshiping amid the heavenly throng. The Apostle Paul recalls his own transformation from persecutor of the church to least of the apostles emphasizing the grace of God that first blinded, then enlightened him. Though Paul surely deserved death, the risen Christ showed his face to him, chose him, changed him, and sent him to serve God's purpose in mission to the Gentiles. In this Sunday's Gospel reading, we hear Luke's version of the call of the disciples. Unlike Matthew and Mark, Luke gives the fishermen a compelling reason for leaving their boats, their fathers, their families, and their livelihoods behind. In bringing about the stunning catch of fish, nearly boat sinking in its exceptional bounty, Jesus clearly displays a mastery of their world and they immediately recognize the advantages of forging a connection with him. Simon's humble gesture and cry of unworthiness is the proper response to the invitation of such a great one and potential patron in his ancient Mediterranean culture. With this sense of the big picture, we can return to the details of this fish story. It takes place in the morning, probably good and early, and people are already flocking to Jesus. Interestingly, he first invites himself onto the boat, then asks Simon to put out from the shore. He must possess some air of authority. Thus separated from the press of the crowd, he teaches all who have ears to hear. Next, he directs the fishermen, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon, nominal leader of the group, makes it clear that this order comes from Jesus, not from him. Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. In other words, If the fishermen finally succeed in catching some fish, Jesus gets the credit. If not, he gets the blame for dragging them out onto the lake for more frustration. Jesus tells the fishermen to try again, aware of their exhaustion from the night's fruitless effort. He asks them to fish in the daylight a departure from their usual strategy for success. In response to their version of, we tried that, it didn't work, he challenges them to trust, to persevere with an attitude of hope and openness to new possibility. His presence makes all the difference. 
John's Gospel tells a similar story set after the resurrection. In it, Jesus calls from the shore with advice for the frustrated fishermen. Cast your net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. The overflowing net prompts the disciple whom Jesus loved to say, It is the Lord! So also, grace overflowing in our lives prompts us to recognize the presence of Jesus.